Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. This is A Different Perspective with Kevin Randall. A retired U.S. Lieutenant Colonel, Kevin Randall has been studying UFOs for nearly 50 years. Kevin has investigated some of the most famous UFO cases in the world and has been consulted for dozens of documentaries about UFOs. Considered one of the leading experts into the Roswell UFO crash of 1947, Kevin has written more than 25 books about UFOs, including the recently published Roswell in the 21st Century. Now, here is the host of A Different Perspective, Kevin Randall. And we are back with A Different Perspective, and by that I mean from the last program, not uh, tonight yet. Uh, I am joined by Michael Horn. He is the authorized America media representative for Bill a reclusive living in a rugged rural area of Switzerland, who claims he is still, he is still ongoing contacts. He sta- claims that he has ongoing UFO contacts with Plagian. I always thought it was Pladian, but we've changed that, I guess. Extraterrestrial human beings, uh, which began in 1942 when he was only five years old. Michael is the producer, director of the new Billy Meyer documentary, The Spiritual Teaching of In Everyday Life. The writer, producer, and director of the award-winning film, and they did they listen, as well as the co-producer of the new documentary, as, as the time fulfills, which presents an abundance of ironclad prophecies, accurate scientific evidence that irrefutably authenticates the Billy Meyer case. He is the writer and co-producer of the award-winning feature-length documentary, The Silent Re- Revolution of Truth as well as the writer, producer, and narrative of the DVD, The Meyer Contacts, The Key to Our Future. Michael Horn joins me now. Michael. Kevin, thank you for having me on. I think it's very, very gracious of you, and I appreciate the opportunity. I think the first question we need to answer here is how did you get involved with uh, Billy Meyer? Well, actually, um, I walked into a bookstore in Los Angeles in 1979, and I bought the first photo book called Contact from the Pleiades, UFO Contact from the Pleiades. And one of the things that happened at that time, I I was looking at all the pictures, the evidence, and what have you, and it was stunning. It was startling. And I didn't know, uh, actually, until fairly recently, again, when I revisited the book, all of the gems that were in there that would contribute even later on, many years afterwards, to my research and to my, uh, you know, my perspective that the Meyer case is singularly authentic, still ongoing, etc. So that was my uh, introduction by walking to the bookstore. Uh, it was only about um, oh seven or so years later that I was in a place called Sedona, Arizona, where I. Uh, met someone who lived in L.A., as I did at the time. One thing led to another. We spoke about UFOs, Billy Meyer. He told me when I came back to L.A. to get the um, the contact reports from him. That was 1,800 pages of transcripts of Billy Meyer's uh, conversations with the alleged Pleiadian play- people, whatever we want to call them. I did, and that began the next phase of my study. And then in 2000, I went to Switzerland for the first of my 18 visits, 18 trips, uh, each time spending uh, time with Meyer, talking to him, 
asking questions. I did a lot of filming. I tried to trick him four times in three years to see if he might be fibbing about something or other and found that he wasn't. So I, you know, I go back to 79 on it and I'm still doing work on it to this day. Well, uh, I guess the next question I would have is um, we had had some discussions via email, I guess. And um, you had mentioned a fellow who had a military background, and I asked about the vetting process. And what you did was you sent me an interview that had been conducted by Alejandro Rojas with Jim Delatoso. And I wondered if that vetting process was in there, but it wasn't. So I guess um, you had sent me that that interview with uh, Delatoso. Why, why did you send me that particular interview? Oh. Um, actually, well, I'll tell you, um, but first I do want to clarify that, as you know, uh, when you pointed it out subsequently, I sent you uh, and this guy, Joe, a contact email inviting you two as military guys to communicate directly with each other so it wouldn't be filtered through me. Now, I don't know if you did take up that invitation from him as well to converse with him, but I will tell you about the Jim Diltoso part now that you've asked that. I sent that because one of the things that a lot of the critics, I think yourself included, have claimed is that the original negatives were never analyzed in the Billy Meyer case. And it turns out that in that interview, as well as in printed documentation that we've had available for well over a dozen years, actually it goes back about 30 years, uh, Jim Delatoso did report on the careful examination of four first, you know, negatives right there. Plus, he examined numerous other photographs, and he created a photo, uh, I think it's called photogrammetric procedures for analyzing photos, including, and he mentioned this in the interview, Kevin, he mentioned that sometimes second and third degree prints can be very useful as well. And he explained why. I mean, we can go into any of that that you want. But that is to explain why I had sent you that, because that had been sent to me. And I, I didn't ever know that Dilatoso had done an interview where he explained his original in, uh, examination of original negatives. So you find Jim Dilatoso is a credible source? Well, wait, you know what? Here's what I, how I answer it. There's so much information in this case, and so much evidence that I think if we're going to be fair in examining it, we should do it as investigators. You're a researcher, investigator, I am too. The first thing one has to do is really start at the beginning. Jim Delotoso is several years past the beginning, as a matter of fact, almost 15 or so. The real beginning, as I think you know, is the unimpeachable and irreproducible 1964 foundational evidence from India, which Meyer, uh, you know, constitutes or is constituted. That, that wasn't my question. My question <laughs> was, do you find Jim Delatoso as a credible source? Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to start with you on a professional basis so I can answer that credibly, because I think that that question is more <clears throat> pertinently answered by the people that look and review his procedures. And if you've obviously read the entire photo analysis he did, correct? Yes. All right. So I could say to you, well, what are your objections to it? But we're ahead of ourselves because here's, here's the fact, the, the thing as I see it. So many questions, so many claims and charges against the authenticity of the Meyer case have been launched when the actual irre irrefutable proof of its authenticity I say it exists, but it should certainly be established. But you say, but but you mm -hmm. have said that uh, Jim Delatoso did all this analysis of the Meyer photographs, proving that they are authentic. My question is: Is Jim Delatoso a credible source for that kind of analysis? Again, Kevin, I, I'm not trying to play gotcha here with you. There's three, you know, there's there's other people that have independently examined the photos, and you yourself can run a test on one of the photos using Photoshop. So before I go and endorse, uh, let's say, Jim Delatoso is the ultimate expert on that, I would say that so far from what I know, his work has not been refuted, credibly refuted and substantiated. But again, we're 15 years ahead of ourselves. If the evidence from 1964 is authentic, 
that's where we start because it means that Meyer has presented to us the most singularly important evidence and situation in human history, contact with extraterrestrials. If not, then we could dump the case there probably too. Well, since we're not going to get an answer to that question, Excuse me, Kevin, I'm a professional who's been investigating. No, no, we don't need the credentials here. I wanted it. I had a very specific question for a very specific reason. Jim Teletoso had claimed to have a a PhD from McGill University. That turned out not to be true. That that certainly affects his credibility. It may. That's fine. As I said. He also said. And he went with Wendell Stevens to the, what is it, the Zanza Systems to take a look at the photographs. that he had. They had photographs there. According to Tony Ortega in the, new, uh, the Phoenix New Times, uh, they were told that uh, they came to the, the Anza under the pretext of wanting to buy equipment. They just demonstrated to it, and they stamped many pictures and left and made no data interpretations whatsoever. He's been using that as evidence that the photos are authentic. No, but what- actually, let me interrupt you here. First of all, we can get into a lot of he said, she said. We've got people that signed off who are phenomenal experts in all their fields, photography, special effects. I mean, Michael Malin, Mars Mission, they've all endorsed the authenticity of Myers photos. But here's something else. I um, I just put out a blog tonight before we came on the air. I finished it about a half hour before. And in there, uh, and it was sent to you in email as well, you're going to see something you may not have seen before, which are photographs from the original analyses of the photos, not negatives, but of the photos that use photogrammetic, uh, oh gosh, that word, photogrammetic uh, analysis. Plus it used thermography and a bunch of edge enhancement, haze analysis, all technological tools for assessing whether a photograph is genuine, meaning whether the object is a three-dimensional large object distance from the camera or a model or special effect. I reproduced in the blog for everybody to see now, and believe me, that is now out in the world, and it will be spoken of quite a bit. That's from 1979. That has never been argued, debated, or debunked. That is you know, the other side of the coin, but we must not avoid, is this case real or not? Then we can march through all the evidence, and there is a lot of it. But uh, we keep diverting from uh, the questions. I mean, we have an instance where they went into a specific institution. They claimed that they were, and I say they, it would be Delatoso and Wendell Stevens, claimed that they were going to buy the acute computer equipment, that they uh, then printed those pictures that they gathered at that organization, they, the uh, modifications to it, they gathered this organization and made some claims in the book that you talked about there mm-hmm. that said uh, that uh, this kind of proved the authenticity of the pictures. But when the people at the uh, company, the Anza, were asked about that, about um, the thermogram, the color density separations, the low frequency properties, and all of this sort of thing that they claim proved that these were uh, true. And in fact, you could see the ground reflected in the craft's bottom, eliminate the double exposures and that sort of thing. And the uh, fellow at the company, Din Witte, said, no, we put those colors in the photo. Jim Delatoso said, can we make the bottom of the object appear to reflect the ground below? I said yes, and we performed the operations. They then printed the pictures as if that had been some kind of significant al- analysis, and all they had really done was modify the pictures at the request of Stevens and Delatoso, which suggests that there's manipulation going on, and Delatoso later said that the captions were misleading. And now I have to take a break, I see, on the clock, and we will get back to that. Um, mm-hmm bells points when we come back here in just a moment uh the blog that you want to look at would be www.theyfly.com and i always put additional information up on my blog at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com we will return right after these short messages
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And we have returned. I am joined by Michael Horn, who is the authorized American media representative of Millie of the Billy Meyer a contact case. We were talking about this uh, photo analysis that had done at uh, De Anza uh, Systems there in San Jose, California. And the fellow who had been uh, uh, talking about that was a guy named Ken Didwitty, who worked at the corporation and uh, told us about the captions on the photos, uh, which were their interpretations, but not Dinwitty's or De Anza's uh, Systems uh, 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 explanations or interpretations, and he, he said that nothing we div- uh, did would have divined, defined what the results meant. So we have an expert in the field who uh, was not actually an expert in the photographic field, but a, but a person who had been involved in some of this analysis, and he said it really wasn't analysis, it was more of a sales tool. Uh, All right, so I, I'm sure you'd like me to respond, so I will. What we have is a he sh- says he said kind of a debate and it can easily be resolved because these days we can have somebody take a look at those photographs that also do independent analysis you know that there were three new independent analyses done on two sets of photos meaning two uh, categories of Myers photos and on one film and they are deemed singularly authentic with the now available computer protocols so that anybody can duplicate but I want to say one other thing. Um, this is an interview. It isn't grandstanding on my part or your part. So since you mentioned early on that I had uh, introduced you, in effect, to a, an expert that I knew, a military one, I will, for the benefit of the audience, explain that this man was the top level, the highest rated no, 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 I don't want to go there at this point. We'll get to well, that later on, but that's taking this discussion in a direction I don't want to go at this point. Well, I, I, I want to. Excuse me, you're interviewing me. I'm a researcher, and if you had the credibility as a researcher that I do, you might be a little more patient so that your audience can understand that you are trying to prevent me. Since you just quoted a, an expert who disagreed with somebody, you know that the U.S. Air Force, Office of Special Investigation, top-level investigator from 61 or 67 to 71 or so, is this man, Joe Tisk. He said personally to me, and he's tried to make it available to you, the Meyer case is 100% singularly authentic, and unless you can debunk the 1964 evidence, you need not even proceed any further. This is a man who vetted personally George H.W. Bush. General Westmoreland was hired by the Air Force to also ferret out spies. The former prosecutor and trial attorney 
Robert Joyner also said, this is courtroom quality scientific research. The case is authentic. Now, if you want to go into he said, she said, he said, that's fine. But, but you're you quoting, you're, appeal, you're, you're, what you're doing is called appeal to authority, which yeah. is not scientific evidence. It's an attempt to, uh, it's a debate point. It so is not good scientific evidence. You just appeal to authority. And that's no, no. Yes, you did. Excuse I, me. Look, I've been through this with people who run that appeal to authority and peer review stuff. And then as soon as you quote experts, they say you're appealing to authority. You can't have it both ways, Kevin. This is either true or it isn't. You well, have declared that the Meyer case is a hoax. And you absolutely. Produce, you produce and I, look, I look at the evidence that you put us on your website. You talked about Neil Davis at Design Technology, who said that he found no evidence of hoax in the Meyer photographs. But he looked at prints. He looked at center, second generation prints, and he also said in that very same interview that you need to look at the uh, you need to look at the whole uh, sequence of the prints. You have to look at uh, the negatives to get a good idea of what's going on. That's another guy who said that he, he says that there's no evidence of hoax in the second generation prints. But he's also saying that we haven't had an opportunity to look at the negatives. So, as I said. Unless you can show that this man in 1964 with a 1940s Kodak Bellows camera hoaxed some 80 UFO photos of which 11 still remain with an eyewitness, a young woman, and, an, and her associate who remain to this day, the woman being a former UN diplomat, both of whom have been vetted by a military evaluator from reading body language, including Joe Tisk, two, two military experts, you want to move on to this photographic expert and that one. Since you say it's a hoax, simply explain to me. How did Meyer hoax the 1964 evidence, which is irreproducible and establishes the single view? I've seen, I've seen some of those pictures, and they're easily re reproducible, hoaxable, by using a photographic larger as you print the pictures. There's yeah. nothing extraordinary about that. And the article that's referred to about that was written by a, an Indian newspaper man who... Um, probably didn't bother, didn't have the opportunity. He, he, he just reported what Meyer told him without bothering to, to, back, to investigate it. He said that there were about 80 photographs, not that there were 80 photographs, and he said that Meyer had had 400 stolen. I don't know why people would steal 400 UFO photographs. But, the, but here's another question. Here's my question to you, which is, um, are there... We've, we've looked at some of the photographs. We've proven that they were faked. They were, no, attributed, they, were, they were attributed to Meyer. There's 230 of them that have been eliminated, at least 230 of them that have been eliminated, right. plus the, the uh, photograph of uh, Dean Martin's uh, dancers. The, oh, uh, gosh. Really photograph. A, Kevin, you've made a huge mistake, and you should have read the whole block I sent out. We have now proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that those photographs were not faked by Meyer. Now, I'll back up. No, so I read the whole thing, and I know what you're going to say, that they were substituted by somebody else who wanted to make Meyer look bad. No, no, no. Hold on. You said something just a moment ago that your audience should know is so silly that you shouldn't have said it. You're talking about a man using an enlarger. Now, let's just fill in the details. The 1940s Kodak Bellows-type camera, which my father had, <laughs> prints up when they're developed, these little black and white photographs, they're not a large Myers traveling through Europe with a backpack. Do you know the size of an enlarger, a photograph? I know enlarger. all about how that works. And I can tell you exactly what the photographs look like when you examine them. They look like and that's, what, <laughs> and that's why we need the negatives to see if that flying cross was really in the negative. They but the mean. negatives haven't been produced for scientific analysis. In fact, a lot most of the photographs haven't been produced for scientific analysis. So when you were in Switzerland looking at those photographs in his album, you thought those photographs were faked? I said I saw the photographs. I said nothing about going to Switzerland. Oh, oh so, you bet. so here is a, the only claimed ongoing UFO contact case with 125 plus witnesses, photographs, all sorts of stuff, the original locations where I've been, but you haven't gone there and you're telling me photos are faked that you haven't seen? Now, wait. I, I can look at 
the no, photographs. No. I can look at the photographs and tell you how they're faked. You yeah. also reported that 230 of them have been faked. You also oh. said that they were faked by somebody else. They weren't talk, taken by well, Meyer, although well, for decades they were they were said these photographs were taken by Billy Meyer. Now when they've been proven to fake, they say, oh, well, no, those photographs were substituted by the men in black. Maybe the CIA had done yeah. it. You know what? You're really not going to roll over this so simply. Here's the thing. Not a one of those 230 photographs, which were disavowed in the 1970s by Meyer and the player, not a one was of a UFO. We happen to know that every one of the UFO photos we have published or Meyer's published, the 617 digitally enhanced ones in the newest photo book, all of those are authentic. 617, not a one of them has been attacked by a skeptic to claim that it's a hoax photo. You cannot prove that Meyer's photos from 64 are a hoax because- Wait a minute, to... wait a minute. I don't have to prove they're a hoax. You must prove that they're authentic and you have failed to do so. That's the crux of the argument. Uh, no. It's not didn't... incumbent on me to prove that he's hoaxing this stuff. It's incumbent so... on you to produce the evidence. And I'm saying the evidence has been refuted. The evidence is not as authentic as you'd like it to believe. And there's a great number of problems with it. Captain... In fact, Jim Lorenzen, and this is what, another point I wanted to make when Jim Delatosa was on the uh, uh, um, program that you sent me, Delatoso had said about Jim Lorenzen that um, he said that the Lorenzen's had taken no position that I could interpret, which is untrue. Jim Lorenzen said on the very first book that was printed that he was asked for a um, comment about it. And he said it looks like very good art. When that was challenged, when, when um, the book was published, uh, the uh, I guess the endorsement wasn't quite the way he'd said it. And Jim Lorenzen sent a letter to, I think it's Tom Welch and the elders. And it was a, published in the 1979 issue of the APRO Bulletin, where he said that um, he described the Meyer photos as art. And he said, my current inclination is and has always been that the case is an elaborate hoax. So we have Jim Delatoso saying that Jim Lorenzen had no indication, and we have very good evidence that Lorenzen uh, thought the whole thing was a hoax from the very beginning. Kevin, you're interviewing me tonight, and I put something to you that you cannot credibly answer. You're talking to me about a man, 27 years old, walking around the outskirts of Delhi, India, supposedly carrying a photo enlarger and getting... I never said that. Well, you said me. that the way you fake that photograph... And you, you and, don't take that photograph with the 1940s codex spells. Now, look, here's the deal. You're claiming that that's so without evidence. You have claimed that without evidence. I am telling you that the 1964, you, you tried to attack the fact that a reporter with no axe to grind in 1964 is describing UFO photos that we still have today. You're trying to make it look like he's some kind of a joker. That no, 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 no. I'm not trying to, I'm saying that he did the same thing Phil Jones said when he interviewed Frank Kaufman. He accepted what Kaufman was saying as the authentic, as authentic and ran with it. Kevin, please, don't insult the intelligence of your listeners. He's looking at the photographs. He doesn't care what the guy's saying to him. He reports, yes, the man says he's been here and done that. And I'm looking at photographs, 80 UFO. Where did he get 80 UFO photographs in the middle of nowhere in India in 1964? And as Joe Tisk says, unless you can credibly answer that and substantiate it, you're done. Don't worry I about Jim Lorenzen. Answer the primary foundational evidence in this case, which establishes. I'm saying, I'm saying the evidence, the evidence is flawed, and you won't listen to that. I'm going to have to take. I'm going to have to take a break here. We're coming up on on the time frame, and what I wanted to get into was another statement that you had made about the. Um, I wanted to get into the prophecy aspect of the, of this whole sure. thing as well, because I think that's an important place that we need to go. Um, because you had said that uh, no one on earth in all recorded history actually has produced anything remotely closely to Billy's stunning record of unparalleled prophetic state accuracy. Uh, since he hasn't made any erroneous predictions that we are aware of, there's no irrelevance to the idea of hedging one's bets. How do you hedge bets when you actually accurately foretell specific events, locations, and years, and that sort of thing? And I wanted to get into that, and we're going we're gonna to run out of time, and I think we're going around and around in the 
a photograph thing with me saying one thing, you saying something else, and we're never going to come to a meeting of the minds. But I do mm -hmm. want to talk about the prophecies. I say again, if you uh, want more information from the Billy Meyer aspect, uh, they, from the proponents of the Billy Meyer case, take a look at www.theyfly.com. I will have additional information on my blog at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. And it always... Uh, we have a bunch of things in there as well that uh, help you link to it. So we will be back right after this, so stick around. Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Ancient prophecies, legends, and current events indicate we're entering a high-frequency era supporting enlightenment. During expansive times, old rules fail, necessitating access to the ever-shifting currents of life for guidance. There is an ancient form of shamanism through which we can obtain the information we need. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Art School, with a great new provision for those interested in spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Galactic Shamanism, Art of the Ancients, Key to Tomorrow is an upcoming series of leading-edge online affordable classes designed to guide and support you and your family during these times of transition. Embrace the magic. Empower your life. Study Galactic Shamanism at findyourpathhome.com. And as I promised, I am back. I am joined by Michael Horn, who is the authorized American media representative for Billy Meyer. His website is www.theyfly.com, where you can learn everything you need to know about Billy Meyer and his uh, experiences, I suppose. I did cut off the uh, debate about the... Um, photographs here because it seemed that we were going back to the same points over and over again and assumptions were being made. And I did want to talk about the prophecies that Billy Meyer has made uh, over the years. And he's made, made many, many, many of them. Um, and I, I read a statement and I, I think that uh, was pretty much your, is your um, beliefs today, is it not? Uh, no, it's my knowledge. I don't believe in anything. Okay, we can split a fine here if you want to. Um, and you and and you talk about the prediction, the accuracy of these predictions. That's correct. Um, how many of them are plagiarized? The predictions? Yes. None that I know of. I know um, Myers, you know, for instance, Myers, the first person to warn about the the damage to the ozone level. Uh, that's simply not true. Really. Yeah. And, and and we know we in, in 1975, I think it was February of 1975, he talked about the damage to the ozone layer. Yeah. The information had already been published in the New York Times and the uh, and the, I think the uh, magazine Science predating that. We have no um, corroboration of his contact reports from 1975. The first time that was published, I believe, was 1979 or 1980. 
So we we have a discrepancy there. Uh, actually, you're wrong. And where you're wrong is with this particular. <clears throat> well, let me let me give you the, the exact quote since you appreciate that. Through the guilt of the people, all storms will assume increasing and more violent forms, such as hailstorms, blizzards, and flooding rains. As, however, also the ozone layer will become very dangerously damaged. July 5th, 1951. Okay. When did uh, that, when was that published? Well, the first time it was published was in 1951 when, with the help of one of his teachers, I think it was something in the neighbor, uh, neighborhood of about a few thousand copies, letters. 3,000. Yeah, about 3,000 letters were sent out. Um, now, of course, here's a 14, uh, let me see, I got right, 14 year old guy uh, living in rural Switzerland in 1951 with nothing to gain by doing this. But it wasn't only at that time that he did. In 1958, he specifically said, also, when nature defends itself against the human madness of planetary destruction, the earth becomes ever more naked and less fruitful. And well, let's, the, let's, talk, let, let's talk about this 1951 letter, because I'm, I'm just absolutely fascinated by that one. Um, he made 3,000 copies. How did he do that? Uh, with the help of the teacher at his school, I think they had like a primitive copy machine, but I don't know. I wasn't a there. copy machine? Mm -hmm. Or did they, did they use a mimeograph? Does it matter to you really that much? Are, are, it, let me ask well, yeah, because I'm trying to figure out how, how a 14-year-old boy made 3,000 copies of this letter, which would have taken 12 reams of paper in 1951. And what well, happened to all those letters? Well, they were sent around the world in 1951. That's some, what, 66 years ago? Would you like to see if there's an original left? Because he didn't get responses. I think he got one response. So as an investigator... We would be curious, wouldn't we, about all of this information and all of the claim prophecies, and we could go, you know, into so many. But I think one that might be of special interest to you, one thing that would be of special interest to you, Kevin, would be <laughs> just how Meyer managed to scoop all of our astrophysicists. I, well, I, first of all, I don't think he did. I, I, I say that the letter was not published until 2005, 2006, right. and it's because one of his uh, Palladian pals gave him a copy of it, because he didn't have any more of it, according to the documentation that was published on a number of websites. Well, so you're, now you're impugning his honesty, so let's go to something that you could really sink your teeth into. Well, let's, let, me do, let me do one other thing here before we, before we do that, because I, I, I find one of these, uh, I, I asked about him plagiarizing the, um, some of these um, predictions that he had made, and there's a, a long list of those things uh, that he said. And he, one of them, he said um, that um, oh, well, uh, that that uh, there would be a space man spacecraft to Venus. And uh, I'm wondering how you would land a spacecraft on Venus. Where was that? Uh, it, it's. Um, in a number of the of the predictions that were, uh, let's see if I have the exact sor source here. I know that um, it's in it's in um, one of the listing of predictions he was talking about uh, creating a new energy. This would this would come in 2028, creating a new energy source, probably controlled thermonuclear reaction. Hunger is gradually being overcome. Launch a manned spacecraft to Venus. That was actually uh, predicted also by a guy named Venga. Um, so we're wondering about Meyer. Meyer's prediction was uh, Venus will be particularly interesting for terrestrial human beings during the period, and for that reason, man will contemplate sending a manned space capsule to the volcanic planet. So what I'm saying here is that the, some of these astounding predictions he made has actually been predicted by other people prior to him. First of all, number one, it doesn't make it wrong, but let's give you, you know, look. There was a new scientific discovery that was just made within the last month or two, right? And that is that gravity, this is a new scientific discovery that's warranted tremendous press in the scientific community. Gravity actually has a speed to it. It's the speed of light. That was just discovered, Kevin. However, 
Billy Meyer on December 31st, 1988, and this has been online on my site, or pardon me, on Future Mankind since 2007, he asks a question about the speed of gravity, and he refers, he says, he was told that it was the same speed as light. And well, that's an, inter that's an interesting, interesting point, but that still doesn't get around the problem of landing a manned spacecraft on Mars. I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry, not Mars, on Venus. That's one of those debatable things that he does not. First of all, I don't know if he said they'd landed or that they would send one to Venus. But the other thing his is. Quote, his quote was, man will complicate, compl contemplate, contemplate sending a manned space capsule to the volcanic planet, and this was Venus. Terrestrial human beings during this period, for the, uh, and for this reason, man will contemplate sending a manned space capsule to the volcanic planet. We know it's impossible because it would melt. And you had said that we'd found no evidence of any of his predictions being wrong. Stunningly accurate predictions. What we have, what we, what we have here, is a list of predictions that he's made, and has been published long after those those facts have been established. Kevin, he never said that they would land a space capsule on Venus. He said they would send one in a manned space capsule. And that is the same way we originally have our own capsule circling the moon at whatever distance. Mm. However, I just gave you a specific bit of information that Meyer could not have known in 1988 that is copyrighted. It's been online for the past 10 years. It is the most astounding new scientific discovery. And you want to talk about a, a capsule that Meyer never said would land on Venus. This is what's called being disingenuous. And of course you wanted to get off the photographic discussion because when you have an... No, no, I, I wanted to get off the photographic discussion because I wanted to talk about the predictions because you said they were so accurate. I'm saying we can find lots of holes in those predictions and they're not that accurate. And you keep, you keep moving the discussion in the direction you want to go. I'm saying I've got a list of predictions here. We've got the moons of Jupiter. We've got the alien autopsy stuff. And I'm saying that when he's come out and said specific predictions, it's always been after the fact. It's been no. the, pub the published been information is after the fact. You cannot prove that he made the predictions prior to the events. You just That's what I'm saying. Of, you just mentioned moons of Jupiter because you want to focus on what Meyer could have said that would have been inaccurate about Almaty or whatever. But what you're neglecting to say and this one I know, is that Meyer accurately predicted the most singular important discovery of the Voyager mission. That was that Io was the most volcanically active body in the solar system. He predicted that, published it, if you will, in October of 1978. Wendell Stevens happened to casually mention already having that material in his possession, traveling back to the States when he arrived on the 9th, on the 12th of March, 1979, NASA JPL announces the single most important discovery of the entire Voyager mission is what Meyer published in October 78. And I called Dr. Joseph Averka, who was at Cornell University and worked on that project, and told him, sent him an email with Meyer's information, called him up, and he said, well, if he said that, then he was absolutely right. Now, do you want to argue with that? Or do you want to pick on the fact that Meyer said 200 kilometers the size of the moon and it's 250? Or do you want to go to the place where Apophis, the, the asteroid, NASA first dismissed the threat of it, and now they readjusted their size estimate down to within 75 meters of what Meyer published back about, oh, 15 years ago. You want to play gotcha? I'm going to play gotcha with you, Kevin, and you're going to look silly. But go ahead and try it. Um, sure, why not? He said that um, there were 17 moons of Jupiter. They're over 60. No. What happened was when he said that... Isn't that interesting? There's always an excuse about why the information that he published earlier has been modified to cover the information that comes later. Okay. And you can't, offer, you can't offer any corroboration of these things that you're saying prior to the events being announced widely. Kevin, Kevin, why don't you read every, you know, you, you're one of the guys that goes and looks for the dirt. You're not an investigator. Let's get that clear. On wait the a minute, wait a minute. Let does not degenerate into name calling, which you have a very good habit of doing. 
Kevin, you are trying to defeat the core question here, number one. Now let's get right to the 17 moons. What Meyer was told by the Playaren is your scientists define moons differently in size. We have specific recommendations. Our, our criteria for moons are thus and so, and therefore Jupiter has X number of moons. Saturn has X number of moons. They told him with Saturn, yeah, your scientists are going to get it wrong because they're going to come up with dozens of moons that are really the Adonid asteroid pieces. I wish you had done your research and knew what you were talking about. It embarrasses me to talk to you this way because I don't usually get incompetence from an interviewer. Somebody okay, that's enough. That's you. I do not want you calling names anymore. I have been very careful in not calling any names during this discussion or in all the nasty emails that you've sent me over the months. That's I have been very call. careful about uh, about calling names. Oh, I was very careful in the very beginning. I said I did not believe the Meyer case, meaning simply that I just did not accept it until I, I saw the evidence. Later on, I came to a different conclusion. But I have to say one thing right now that you cannot interrupt me on because I have to take a break. I can't stop it. I'm dumped against the, the timeline again. The website, uh, take a look at the alternative explanations and all this sort of thing is at www.theyfly.com. You can take a look at my take on this stuff from uh, www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. We will be back right after this for the last segment. Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Believe it or not, we are back. I am joined by Michael Horn, who is the authorized American media representative for Billy Meyer. We seem to have a disagreement on stuff. One of the things I wanted to get into was asking him about abductions, but I don't think we're going to make it to that tonight, which is too right. bad because I think that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, we were talking briefly about the moons of Jupiter and the difference of, I guess, the definition of moons between what uh, the um, – Palladians say and what our Earth scientists say and that sort of thing. I'm not sure that's going to take us any anywhere at all. Um, right. So let me say something, Kevin. Okay, like, go ahead. Yeah, you were upset that I was calling you. Nathan, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm not upset. I don't care okay. what you call me. Yeah. I just don't think yeah. it's polite. Well, I don't think it's polite that you on your blog – Made a firm, this wasn't your opinion. You claimed this is a hoax. Meyer is a fraud. You defamed a man. And no, I didn't say it was a fraud. I just said it was a hoax. Well, oh, okay. 
dare we split hairs on that one? You repeatedly said it's a hoax. You faked it. Oh, I'll say it again. It's a hoax. Okay, good. So that is that your opinion, or are you telling me that that's a fact? That's a fact. It's a fact. Yet you have been unwilling and unable to address the fundamental question. And I listen, I do four-hour presentations on the Meyer case, including all the prophecies and predictions you could want. I've got a video as the time fulfills 55 of them, never refuted, even Does it? Oh, for heck. crying out, this stuff has been refuted repeatedly, and you just ignore you just ignore the rebuttals to your arguments because it doesn't fit into your worldview. No. I mean, you, I know that, you know that, everybody knows that. I can say, I can sit here and you, you say, well, he sent out 3,000 letters when he was 14 years old, but none of the letters survived. He gets it instead from one of his Palladian pals, and they, they publish it in 2005, and we're supposed to accept that. It was so, really written in 1951. It was very to- specific, very specific predictions in it that all came true. But if I was uh, publishing something in 2005, I could make very specific posi- predictions about what would go on in the world from 1951 on. But you didn't. And I just gave you... Neither did he. Excuse me, can I, can I get a little time in with you here? You know, I just read something to you where we proved that Meyer stooped our physicists by 30 years. That was only one of those particular things. And it's all easily verifiable. And in, in, in May of 1988, Meyer also specifically wrote that there were black holes, wandering black holes, galaxy wandering black holes. That was not discovered until just earlier this year. That's another 30-year span. I've got dozens of these things on my website, and when you say everybody's refuted them, no, nobody's Send the refutation. Nobody does it. There is the problem. You want to make blanket statements. I go back to a specific thing, and I'm certainly surprised, Kevin, that you've never troubled yourself to go and confront this terrible hoax of a guy in Switzerland and, and, and show that his photos are fake. You tell us about a photo enlarger that he must be carrying around. No, I did not say that. So you're trying to belittle the argument. I am saying I know how you could fake those photos, and it's very simple to do with a photo enlarger. And what you're suggesting is there are absolutely no photo labs in the whole subcontinent of India where that could have been done. You're saying, all oh, he carried it around in his backpack. No, it's up to you to show that there was such a thing, that a man went to get a photo enlarged or photos enlarged so he could uh, alter them, a vagabond at 27. You see, you this is so unprofessional. I don't care what the subject would be. You are just casting wild aspersions with not one of the facts to back them up. Not one. I, sh- I've given you fact after fact, and you just ignore them because it doesn't fit into your worldview. Photo and larger doesn't fit into my worldview. That's right. It didn't fit into the worldview of the number one investigator for the OSI who said. Wait, this- wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's not go back to to the number one investigator for the OSI because <laughs> why that's not? Really not? Casting dispersions here that you cannot substantiate, and a guy who came at me as a skeptic. As a skeptic, Kevin said, your Meyer case is 100 percent authentic, and I will take on anybody on your behalf. I investigate. I've read this man's body language. I've seen every video. This is an honest man, and his evidence is unimpeachable. And you want to tell me enlargers in India for UFO photos from where? Where was he taking them? How was he creating them? Any evidence, Kevin? You don't have evidence. You want to- what you have? What you have are photos that were allegedly taken in 1964, and you you send me a newspaper article. No, you didn't even send it to me. I had to get it myself. Newspaper <laughs> article. Uh, from from uh, dis- September of 1964, uh, written by a staff reporter from the from the newspaper, and there's a picture of uh, Billy Meyer um, in, in the history. photograph. Kevin, it's called history. We have no. It's called newspaper reporting. And I, you, would you like me to point to any number of newspaper articles that have come out that have been shown to be somewhat inaccurate? Kevin, you're talking about a report that shows. Information. The man himself a credible has been rep- telling the story since 1964. I got no problem with that. Describing photographs that we have to this day, and then a retired UN diplomat comes forward with no profit to her to, to attest to the authenticity of it. And two military investigators read both of Meyer and her as telling the truth. And you you want to talk to me about? Some mythical enlarger for photos that you can't. Now explain. let's 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 now let's forget the mythical for 
photo enlarger because yeah. this is a ridiculous argument and, and, and we're, no, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. So well, let's stop with that. Not. But let's go back to some of the things that I've said that, that are authentic. I mean, we have, we have shown that Billy Myers' prophecies are sometimes uh, taken from – plagiarized from other people. And there's a whole long list of those. Okay. All you've said is – listen, I'll tell you right now. There are other people in history who have come up with some of the same things because that is – that is a given for people. There's going to be times when more than one person foresees something. There were biblical prophets. There was this Mother Yanga or whatever. There are people throughout history. Everybody has 200 plus specific ones, specific with scientific details. Meyer does. Why would that make you angry? Why are these people? I'm just- not angry. Why are you screaming at me? Because you you float in an argument that is intended to debunk rather than investigate, you can't debunk. Well, it. I've looked. I've looked at. I've looked at the information. I've looked at all of this stuff. I find it to be. I'm very skeptical of it. That apparently is not a position that is uh, something you want to to look at. You don't want to hear skeptical arguments. You just want to. You just want to call us names and say uh, you, you no. don't. You're incompetent investigators. You don't do this. You don't do that. Yeah. You had Derek Bartholomew on your show making one erroneous claim after another. And just to clarify in the Ask It photos, here's Make the it box. quick. Make it yeah. quick. They claim that Meyer took photos off of a TV set. That show from Dean Martin ended in April of 74. Meyer took his photos of Ask It December 3rd, 1975. How is he supposed to take photos? The, DVD, the, the videotapes weren't even available till 79, four years later. If you want to be a genuine investigator on this uh, case... You, okay. you never heard of reruns? Yeah, I've checked. It was never shown in Europe until 79, if then. Do your homework and be credible. When did he, when, when did he publish those photographs? The first time was in the 70s. And it's described in the context. I've got, I've got the actual page, the published page from them, where they are talking about nine. But, but, but haven't you also said that those photographs that uh, have been published of the Dean Martin people are are uh, uh, weren't taken by Billy Meyer, and that uh, they were replaced by government agents or the Men in Black? They took his photos, and then there was manipulation done drawing on old photos from the Dean Martin show from a year and a half prior. So and some of the photos that have been published have been shown to be faked. Not faked by Meyer. Impossible. He took his photos <laughs> a year and a half later. This is where you guys just don't get it. No, I think that's where you just don't get it. You don't understand you what's going that? on here. Can you answer that? How here I'm looking at a contact from 1975 where they where they tell him it has to it's a great exception that you're allowed to get photographs of Ascot near because besides this we have found female earth beings who look strikingly similar to them and who interestingly are also cooperating together in America that was published in 1975. The Dean Martin show ended in 1974. There's no rebroadcast, if possible, till 79. I looked it up. You didn't. And I don't want to play gotcha with you. If you want to get... Good, little- because we're out of time. All right. Fair enough. I'm going to... I'll let you go. I thank you for taking time to chat with us and <laughs> rant and rave as much as you can. I will say, I will point people to your website once again at www.theyfly.com. There's an awful lot of information about Billy Meyer on the Internet. Take a look at it, both pro and con, and make up your own mind. Don't believe me. Don't believe Michael Horn. Take a look at it and decide for yourself whether or not this information is uh, accurate. Michael Horn, talk to you later. Thank you, Kevin. Good night. Good night. Uh, For those of you who've been paying attention, um, we are down to the last three shows before we go into our, I guess, series finale here at the end of November. Uh, Take a look at my blog at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. And we have talked in the past about uh, my book, uh, Encounters in the Desert, which deals with the Socorro UFO landing. I think it, it is a good book 
giving a honest evaluation, a dispassionate evaluation of the Lani Zamora landing in Socorro in 1964. And I think that's something that we should uh, um, be aware of, I suppose. If you like the book, put up a review on Amazon. You can get the book on Amazon. Uh, you can look at it uh, in your bookstores if you want a hard copy, that sort of thing. I'd appreciate it if you do enjoy the book to put up a review of that book, and also Roswell in the 21st Century, which again is a dispassionate look at the Roswell case as it exists uh, in, in this environment. I will be back next week with uh, Thomas Eddie Bullard talking about UFOs, and uh, we'll have Adam Dew talking about the Roswell slides at the end of the month. Uh, thanks for listening.